Good morning, good morning. This is Mount Pleasant Missionary Baptist Church. Dr. J. Roy Morrison is our pastor. Today is Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> A lot of people celebrate that. And uh, so we want to duly acknowledge that. So we'll ask uh, Deacon Harrison to be able to open us up as he sees fit. And then we'll get Brother Wardell Sims to do the summary. And we'll jump into the lesson. Good morning, good morning. Morning, morning. Good morning again, everyone. Good morning. Let us have a word of prayer. Good morning. And we'll get started and just thank God for allowing us yes, to see a brand new day. Yes, sir. And he allowed us to come back to his house one more time. Yes. Yeah. And we will come together and study the word. We will get a better understanding of the word. Yes. 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 And we just want to close the wall. Yeah. And we just thank him for his grace and his mercy. Father God, we come this morning with bowed heads and over heart. Thank you for the good morning that you have blessed us with. We thank you, Father, for another week's journey. Thank you for watching over, keeping us safe from all harm and danger. And we just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Father, for blessing our teachers who yes, return Lord. this morning. Yes. Thank you, Father, for restoring his health and strength. Yes. And yes. we just pray, Father, that we continue to do your will. Yes. Because we realize, Father, it's all about you and not about us. Yes. And we just want to be very certain yes. each and every day. Yes. And Father God, we pray that you continue to. <clears throat> Bless your preacher man this morning, Father. Yes. Bless them that you pray that you give them a word. Yes. Pray, Father, that someone be saved, someone to have a closer walk with the baby. And Father God, we just thank you for your thank you. Thank you. beautiful morning that you have yes. And we pray, Father, that whatever we say or do today and through the week, let it be pleasing mm -hmm. in your sight. This we ask you with our son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Praise the Lord. Lads, we have um, today lesson number five for the week of May 5th, 2024. Subject, no need to boast. No, sir. Background passage, Romans, the third chapter. 21st through the 30th verse. Lesson passing, Romans, the third chapter, 21st through the 30th verse. Unifying tongue, justified by faith in Jesus. Lesson text, text number one, the righteousness of the law. Romans, the third chapter, the 21st through the 23rd verse. Second text, God's righteousness demonstrated. Romans, the third chapter, the 24th through the 30th verse. Third text, justified by faith. Romans, the third chapter, the, 30th, the 27th through the 30th verse. Our main thought, even the righteous of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, but uh, Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. Yeah. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, Romans the third chapter, the 22nd through the 24th verse. Our unifying principle. People want to secure their faith on the basis of and of hard work and well earned reputation. Do we all get what we believe we deserve? Paul tells the Roman believers that their boasting will be excluded in God's uh, economy and that a person is justified by faith apart from work. That's an aim to show that no one can boast if he or she is saved. 
Since salvation is the grace gift that is offered to everyone who accepts Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. When he or she does, they are justified before God, not because of the law, but because of God's demonstration of his love. Life aim to show that there is none righteous enough to stand before a holy God. Therefore, if one is saved, it is because they believe that God loves him, her, and therefore God has gifted one with his saving grace. And because of this, no one can boast of his or her salvation. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thanks so very much, Dick and Harrison, for the prayer and the opening. Thank you, Brother Sam, for the lesson summary. Uh, I want to give my testimony because last week I went through something that was uh, I hadn't gone through in a long time. And that was just being incapacitated where I just couldn't. I couldn't function. And uh, the way God showed me through that was that because, I mean, pain had gotten so so bad that all I could think about, listen now, was the pain. Yeah. But see, I know that we got to keep God first right. in all that we do. But see, that's what I'm saying. But a lot of times, people get hung up in their suffering. Right. Yes. And they let their suffering become first in their lives. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it becomes so much. And so Because I would th- you know, I'm trying to say it like, it, it takes over your mind. And if you don't know that it's taking over your mind, then you'll let it drive you. Yeah. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? But then once you get a hold of yourself and you put God where God should be over the suffering and the pain, then all of a sudden you have peace. peace. I I learned that even when I have pain now, I thank God for it. Yes, sir. And I'm thanking him for it. Yeah. He relieves it. He relieves That's right, because you put him you put him before the pain. Yeah. And see, yeah, you put, you got, so what I'm trying to say is in suffering, it may not be, it may not be a physical pain. It may be a financial pain. No, it may be incarcerated. It's something that can take your mind off the of black man. We all been there. That's what I'm trying to say. We got to show and through this lesson. Yeah. I'm in a lesson now. No, no. You see what I'm saying? I'm in a lesson. But 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 I can I can see that because all of a sudden, man, I found myself because you know I was thinking about I have been listen, do y'all know how many Sundays I have taught this class in a row? God has been good Amen. through a heart surgery. I didn't miss. You see what I'm saying? So but then he hit me with that. Because he, he tells everybody you got to rest too. That's right. Yeah. He said you got to get you some rest because that helps you to what? So now I got a better testimony. Because through that I can see where I had forgot about him for a minute, man, because that pain was on me. In here. It, yes, sir. That's what I'm saying now because I know how to deal with it. So when that hit me, I I'm going straight to the Lord. Yeah, yeah. And keep him on my mind. Because that's what it's all about. Because listen, because that's what faith is all about. So today's lesson, we're in the book of Romans. The book of Romans is a book that was written by, is a letter that was written by Paul in advance of his coming to Rome. But the thing about the book of Romans is that it explains Christianity to the Gentiles. That's what it was supposed to do. Because the Jewish Christians already thought they know. So, but you also have to tell other people about who this Christ, who this Savior is. You see what I'm saying? And so it's got to be so absolute in terms of your belief in Christ that you just keep him in your mind all the time. 
And we and you can do it. You people say, oh man, you can't do that. Yes, you can too. Especially when you need him, and we all need him in one way or another. We just don't even we don't articulate it because we need him to breathe. You know, we need him to think. So anyway, for the book of Rome, he wrote the book of Rome around AD 58, after the death of Christ, around 58, the year of our Lord. They said he was most likely in Corinth. Corinthian church, I'm about that. Right. And and it was, he was uh, uh, about he was doing his third missionary journey that he wrote this letter. I like the letter. He first got me because of the scripture that talks about that's what I should do. I don't. And that's what I need to do. He, he was all, that's what got me. I'm like, yeah, man, now this is real right here. This man is talking, he, he's a saint, but he's telling the truth to stuff that, that, that impacts my life. And that impacts everybody's life because that's what the, the lesson is talking about is that we are all sinners, whether Jew or Gentile. So then there's no need to boast because you one or the other, because you all are sinners. That's the lesson. It, 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 where we tell we read the, so the church, the, the you know, the, the Roman Empire had a thing against Christians because they thought that they had bothered about, hey, come for a time. Come on, 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 come Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on around, brother. Come on around. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So, so we can be talking the Book of Romans. We haven't gotten into the scripture yet. We just going through the introduction and so. But the but the Christians, the Christians were such that they would come to town and they would say, "This is the one and only God." So it, the God of the Jews is the God. And you can see, but all the other societies had many different gods. So the problem was when you start saying there was only one God, when there was many gods. You see? So then they. they, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but that became disrupted. Yeah. So then with that, the Christians got expelled from Rome for a period of time, right? Right. And then one of the other emperors came along, and he became a Christian because he invited the Jews, I mean the Christians, to come back, including the, the Christian Jews. So it was Gentile Christians and it was Jewish Christians. And so he expelled mainly the Jewish Christians. So then the majority status seems to have continued in terms of Gentile Christians in Rome more than Jewish Christians. You see what I'm saying? So the Jew, so so in other words, the Jewish people had grown had grow, grew up with what they call the Shema. They talk about God every day. When you get up in the morning, they're talking about God in the Jewish family. You see what I'm saying? Gentile, us, we weren't exposed to that type of, 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 of background. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you have to come and teach people something that they weren't used to in terms of their past. You see? So that's why they call used to call people that were Christian heathens. Mm -hmm. Amen. I heard you. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you didn't know that type of order that God had given to the Israelites through the Ten Commandments. And then once they got the Ten Commandments, then man started to expand it. And all of a sudden, we got all these different churches up and down the street, yeah. and everybody's kind of doing their own thing, but it's outside of the Word of God because this is the main commandment is to keep Him first. Amen. Who is Him? God, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ because it's a person. Yeah. Um, how in the world can man justify worshiping something he made? Right. Yeah, yeah that's, amen. That's in the lesson. Yeah. That's in the lesson. How in the world you're going to make something and you're going to call it superior? <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. That's like explaining something using the word to explain it. It doesn't make you can't understand it because you're using what you're telling me to explain it. 
But when you got something that you believe, that's what I'm trying to say. It's got to be a true. That's why I tried to start off with the pain. I missed yeah. last week. I was sick. And so I was out, and I was saying yeah. the pain had gotten so bad that I let, I let it get in front of God because I was hurt. I'm trying to be tough for you last week. Yes. I was out. And see, that's what I'm trying to say. But then I, I got a lesson from it. A revelation is that you always, you don't let nothing get in front of God. Amen. But it's a it's 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 a it's a it's a training process, you know, because that's what I'm saying. I had let it get around me for a minute, and then I realized what I was doing. I was too much into my pain, rather than getting more into Christ and praying and just saying, God, thank you for what you have done in my life for bringing me to this spot. Thank you, Gene. You see, then once I started talking like that, then the pain was got better. You see, like, yeah, but, yes. but it had got it hit me before I caught myself. I'm trying to tell you, you got to catch yourself because it, 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 it won't come across you until it's something that's really significant. Yeah, yeah. Then, then you got to catch yourself. Yeah. Do not lean unto your own understanding. Yeah. See what I'm saying? I'm telling you, that's the truth. That's the truth of the matter. Listen to this. Let me keep going. Because see, man, our problem is we can't we can't think on God's level. No, we cannot. That, that's why that's why this lesson is important because God is saying it starts out with the you got to capture everybody, right? Mm -hmm. The way you capture everybody and they can't say that they're not part of the group is to call everybody a sinner. Mm -hmm. I don't care whether you're Jew. I don't care whether you're Gentile, you a sinner. You see what I'm saying? And all people are either Jew or Gentile. It's no way in between. But see, all people, so they are, there are, this is it. And this is the lesson. There are cultural differences that we'll never be able to change in one another. When we shouldn't want to. You know, embrace who you are. But just because you embrace who you are, that doesn't mean that you hate other people either. Right. You see, because we want to be like Christ. Right. And we know that Christ was, he, 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 he said, love your neighbor. Yes. You know, as you love yourself. Yes. You see? He loves, you can't get to heaven yet. You hate most of the You can't, I mean, but listen, listen, for a time. It's reason. Yes. See, that's what I'm saying, man. It, it gets to a point, it was almost like when I went back years ago when I found myself in bed. You know, I had to get myself together because I was too hung up in what a lot of people, you can, you can erase this and you can put the Orlando magic up there. Yeah, you can put Orlando. A lot of people might put that or, 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 or bully. Kids would put bully. You see what I'm saying? Something that you that you will not allow God to take over and run because it's overwhelming you and it's overwhelming your faith because that's how painful it is. But if you just allow Him to deal with it, it works. That's what the faith part comes in. You see what I'm saying? That's what Paul was trying to tell the people. He said. Paul wanted to visit Rome soon, so he hadn't gotten there yet in this lesson today. It says, so his brother served as the introduction of himself and the gospel. So people say, if you really want to see the Christian gospel, read the book of Rome, Romans. Read the book of Romans. It's a roadmap to Christianity. You see what I'm saying? It teaches you what you need to know about who Jesus Christ is, because that's the thing about it. See, people always want to say, yeah, I believe in God. Yeah, that's Everybody good. In God. Everybody. Yeah. But you better believe in Jesus Christ. That's our message. Because he came along and he conquered death. He did all these great things. Jesus Christ, the first. But you got to believe and that's where the faith part comes in. You see what I'm saying? Even when you're in pain, you can't switch it up. Yes, sir. You know, when I lay down at night, I'm in pain sometimes, right? And the, the Holy Spirit said, the um, scripture, I will keep you a perfect peace of mind, stay on peace. 
Yeah. They say, I know, I'm, I, I, I'm asleep. Yeah. Right. That is, you might. Yeah. That's what makes the difference. That's right. And if, I mean, I, I, I mean, people hear you saying it, right? And then they they think it still is something that is, that's just not really there. Because, listen, it's for everybody. Yeah. So since it's for everybody, then it's not going to be something that everybody can't achieve. Which is faith and which is salvation. And the way we get there, because of our sinful nature, is the way that he gave us atonement is through the belief in Jesus Christ of Nazareth, or Jesus Christ of Capernaum, or Jesus Christ of Bethlehem, long as you're talking about the Jesus Christ. Amen. they are wrestling with that. Pain and suffering in the morning, Amen. getting up, trying to get up. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm facing, I'm not as young as I used to be, but I'm not as old as I, you know, Want to be, want to be, yeah. and I'm, I'm, I'm going right through that right now. Mm -hmm. right yeah. that. No, that's what I'm talking about because yeah, that, I, no, I've not been blessed, y'all, and I'm counting my blessings because I, I'm telling you, God has had me where I have been able to teach this class. I had missed a Sunday in years. Listen, I can go back on the Zoom and get the first thing that we did at this church on on Zoom when the pandemic hit. So now since the pandemic, forward, that's what I'm talking to. I can count from then, and I know even before the pandemic came along. So I'm giving God praise, but then he showed me through that that even he, I, he could knock my mind off him on the day where I always know I'm here. Ain't no doubt. But he did. And I was, I, I, I was like, wow, wait a minute. I'm letting the pain get ahead of you, God. And I know better. I got to think on Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. I don't miss my word because listen. So the the, the body of the letter, the book, the, the, the book of Romans, is all gospel. It's perhaps making Romans the closest thing in the Bible to a systematic exploration of Christian doctrine. That's what. The, that's a, so if you want to see the whole way the whole thing works, it's in the book of Romans, okay? Because Paul is telling us through his testimony, he starts off, let's get into the scripture. Uh, we're in Romans 3, we're going to start at uh, scripture 21. These scriptures are really something, y'all. Now watch, watch the way this is going to work. It says, I'm going to read it. It says 321. It says, but now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. The righteousness of, of God, well, okay, when he starts out by saying, but, but now, it builds on the thought from the previous uh, verse, which is saying this in 20. We, we, the, the, the lesson starts in 21, right? right? So in 20, it says this, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sin. So they said the law is like a road map. The law tells you what God expects out of you. And from it, you can see the way that we fall short. Because we cannot keep the law. It says for some, the law, for some now, in their mind, mm -hmm. it offers a surefire way to become righteous in God's eyes by perfectly obeying the law. You know what they're talking about in that stuff right there? The Pharisees. Right. They thought that they could keep the law, right. and by them keeping the law, they were found, they, in their mind, not God, right. they were found to be righteous. Because they kept the law. You see what I'm saying? But they didn't keep the law because it was all a front because no man can keep the law. You see? But you can all front like you do and tell people that you do. You're breaking it right there. You see? So so it says this. It says uh, no one. So that was the, 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 the Romans 3.20. No one shall be declared righteous. No, no one. For some, the law offers a surefire way 
to uh, to, to to become righteous. But if if lawful action, if you are lawful, if that cannot justify a person, what can? Mm -hmm. See, we're opening the door now. Right. It says this. It says, uh, uh, for the first time in this letter, Book of Romans, Paul separates law from righteousness mm -hmm. and affirms that his argument is not new. He's not coming up with something clever. He's using the same uh, 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 a statement that were made, that's what, the, that's what uh, verse 21 says, made known, that God has made known to which the law and the prophets testify. He's repeating what the law and the previous Isaiah, Elijah, all the previous Old Testament prophets, right? It said the law was intended to make people aware of their sins. And the prophets explicitly called out the people when they became blind to their sinfulness. You see? Mm -hmm. It says the writer of Hebrews said that the law was a shadow. That that, that touches me. Of the good things to come. If we can just hold on and wait on it. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful day. But, but because right now, that's Hebrews 10.1. It reads this, the law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming, not the re reality themselves. For this reason, it can never, by the same sacrifices repeated endlessly year after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. In other words, the sacrifices weren't acceptable to God anymore. Right. You see, he had to come up with the perfect sacrifice. sacrifice. And that was Jesus himself. Christ. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ. Amen. You got to say it right too. Yeah. Don't confuse people. But yeah, Jesus Christ. So, so let's go to the next scripture, 22. It says, this righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. Now, the righteousness of God mentioned in verse 21 is revealed here to be the gift believers receive. What's the gift? The gift is righteousness. How you receive righteousness? True belief in Jesus Christ. Even when you suffer. You can't let you can't let nothing take its place. No. Nothing. But you gotta make sure you don't get caught off God. He, he tests us. He tests us every day. Yeah, that's right. He tests us. He tests us too. As a matter of fact, we're gonna test something about it. Let me see here. It says faith, because he tested our faith. Yeah. That's, what, that's what Brother Sam was saying. Faith is not just a collection of beliefs, but it's connected to the person of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So, when you talk about you got faith, faith in what? Right. Yeah. In Christ. Yeah. Not you. Not you. Or, 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 or not just say, I got faith in God. That's you do. Yeah, that's, that's a blank. Thank you, brother. Yeah. You got to be specific and call his name. Because that's where there's no other name that has the power of Jesus on earth. No other person. But you can, you can give them credit for the Trinity. Yes. The Father, yeah. the Son, yes. and the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. 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 But you got to believe it. Yes. See, what's happening? Now, listen, man. This is what's going on. Is you got the, the majority of people the average, the average, seems like they're not believing in God anymore, Jesus anymore. No, I'm talking about it just seems, and I, I'm, I'm just saying as best as I can, especially in our community, people are drifting away from God because we are not, we, we, we just, we, we, we not, we, 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 you got to get real about it. 
We got to be able to talk where people can understand what we're talking about. Even though we talk from the word, you got to be able to show the word in action. It is not being taught in the home. No, it's not being taught in the home. That's the problem. That's what, that's man. That's what we talked about earlier before we came in. Really? That if the parents or the grandparents, the grandparents or the great grandparents aren't raising the kids today, you know, nine times out of ten, they're not being raised. They're not being raised. Yeah, I go over When I go over we had mom and dad at the house. It was a it was very few single families. Mm-hmm. You know, we got old folks that play. Yeah, yeah. You didn't play. You stayed together. You right. Them, y'all right. 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 And y'all right. And in the way kids are now, I wouldn't dare say what they say to their mom and dad these days. Now, no, no, I can't. The, the, the see, but, but see, we paying for it. Yeah, we paying for it. We yeah. paying, and it's gonna. I blame my generation and and a generation before. Well, I don't blame my mom generation. I blame my our yeah, generation. that's right. I blame our yeah. generation. Because our generation has caused what we're seeing right now. You see? And, 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 and you know, we're quiet, y'all. I mean, I know I, I don't talk to y'all. It's like, it's, we like mad. But we got to somehow get this mess. That's why I record this all the time. Send it out. Let people hear it. Somebody's hearing the message, and it's going to change their life. And as long as you get one, do it your life. Yeah. If you turn, if you convert one person to Christ, that's a blessing. That's a, that's what you want to do. You want people to see Christ in you, and then you bring somebody else to Christ. That's the goal. Yeah. But that's hey, what's Jesus. happening, brother. Cotton said it because people are not seeing Christ enough. And as hey, a result of that, they don't want to come to this. And so, but then, but listen. But they're not coming to this, then they're going to end up in, in hell. Hey, the whole lot of man, it, 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 it just breaks my heart, man. And the way to see the guy about the guns and the, and the, uh, and the, and the just, just like in Chicago during the weekend. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it's, 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 it's like it's crazy. Man, what's going on? 300 people get shot in a weekend on average. Shot, and you know where they shoot. See, that's the other problem. I'm not going to act like I don't know. I'm going to show y'all some of this word because the lesson title is the key. No need to boast because we all are sinners. Don't let anybody talk about our differences because we're going to have to. God didn't change the Gentile and the Jew. God, God didn't change that. What he changed was our hearts so that we can understand how to love one another. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Amen. But we also got to show that through our own personal action. Yeah. Because, man, our kids, man, our kids. Oh, Jesus. Come on, let me keep going. It says, uh, because this is, this is good. I, I, I want to get to a certain part here. Because, see, listen, it's faith in Jesus Christ. It says, it says that the issue at hand is not Jesus' faithfulness. See, that's what some people try to make. It's not whether or not Jesus was faithful to God. Because he proved that. Until, and, and beyond. Because <laughs> he was God right now. You see what I'm saying? But he proved it. And through, listen, he proved it through his humanity. Yeah. Even though, like Brooke, I just said, the, the, the Trinity, you see, the Father, the Son, and the Holy, you, you see, but he, he, was, he, was, he, was, he was the earthly Son. He was human. Right. And as a result of his humanity, he had to act and be sure that's where the God of the seven that comes in while he was praying to take the cup from me. Right. See, because of his humanity. Right. But see, people, people still they they, they just don't they say, no, nah, he was human, he's like me. No. <laughs> no. That's what that's what we got to convince people of. And the way we convince them of it is we stay the course. Right. That's what I'm saying. That's why I had to make note of this, because I want to stay the course. 
But sometimes he'll take you off because my understanding is not his. So what I'm trying to do, he can make a better point of what I'm trying to do by me. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? By me showing suffering. Don't let suffering get up there. See, I wouldn't have been able to say it like I can say it now had I not suffered. And, and, and next thing I know, I'm putting suffering before God. No. 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 That's what I'm saying. That's how important this is, man. And it works. It works. Let's go to the next scripture. So, it says this in 22b. It says this in 1023. There is no difference. This is the universal uh, scripture. Everybody right. talks about this. This is no respect to a person. Right. It said, there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. For all, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It says this right here, the phrase that there is no difference looks back to, look back to Paul's argument about the fallenness of both the Gentile and the Jews. Everybody fed. <laughs> and all the lost in sin and living counter to God's will. So salvation must be brought to must be brought to both the Jew and the Gentile. Not just the Gentiles, okay? It says God's glory. God's glory is a true and holy representation of God's character in contrast to any idol or other falsehood. God's glory is so amazing because when you think about it, 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 it it's made of God. See, that's why it's in glory because man can achieve that. Not that type of, not glory. And this, well, but when you when, when you see God's glory, but listen, listen, this. Sin prevents us from accurately modeling God's glory. That's it. Because we said, but see, you got people with the tricks acting like they so holy. And they, that's what I'm saying. They're running people off by the droves because no, not one. But you got to be careful with that because just because you know Jesus, that doesn't give you a license to sin. Amen. Because listen, when you get him in your heart, you gonna if you truly got him in your heart, you're gonna want to sin less. Thank you, brother. We we are almost up there. Um, you see what I'm saying? If he's truly in your heart. You gonna you gonna sin less because you really believe in him. You got faith in Jesus. So then the well, this, that's the fruits. The fruits is that you're going to behave better because you really believe. Let's go scripture twenty four. It says, and all see that's the, that's the, that's the trick that people want to put. But if this is the truth. Scripture 24, Romans 3, 24, is freely given. And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Now, some people, listen to this. Some people have misunderstood this verse right here to think that it's a universal salvation. But the argument usually ties to being justified to all who have sinned. And however, this means that it must be justified through Jesus. Not just a general, just universal. That's where that universal justification comes in. I believe in God, so I'm just. No. Jesus Christ justifies you. You see what I'm saying? Am I making sense? Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ, because if you believe in Jesus, then you justify yeah. to God. But if you don't, if you just say, I'm going to jump over Jesus, you're not getting to God, though. Why? Quit me, why? Because you're a sinful creature. And God does not tolerate sin. 
And that's why God had to come up with a way that only God could come up with was how to save us. Because he loves us so much. Go ahead, bro. Is, is it the reason why God put Jesus in the mix like that? Because Jesus was, was man first? You know, was God no, he was man. God first. Okay. He was God. And see, even Genesis, where they talk about let us make man. Right. Amen. 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 You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Let us make man. Mm -hmm. that, that's where the Trinity concept comes mm -hmm. from. It wasn't just God, just one God. It was one God, but God, this one, this one God had three parts. Right. That yes, he did. And only God, see, that's where we got to believe that, though, y'all. That's where we fall in short, is because people will say it, but then when it comes time to profess it, they don't profess it because they're suffering. They don't see it. That's what I'm trying hey, to say. Yes, 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 sir. Okay, come on, baby. Yes, sir. I just want to say that one of the problems we run into is, uh, I guess you have to look like a Christian. And a lot of people think they don't have enough money to look like a Christian. And that kind of throws people off. But they don't understand that uh, we all are the same inside. Not that, not that we have to look like a Christian. Because they'll tell you, you ain't no Christian. Look at you. Right. And we need to yeah. learn that we all have sin and came short. A amen, amen, brother Maro. Because yeah, see, when we try to run the with a label, then we can't wear it. Yeah. Because so then that's why you got to explain it that we being that's what we going through this whole month with pastor being perfected. Right. See, that's the truth. Right. I mean, we all got to sing the same tune. Right. And, and, and yeah, we have to get rid of these myths about Christianity. Right. It's not a white, let me keep going, because I want to say this. It's not a white man's religion. Right. Let, let me keep reading real quick, because it's in here. Because that's where people get confused. Because of the, some of the terminology that exists in Christianity. Mm -hmm. That's what turns off some of the people that look like me and you. But, but, but listen to this. Don't let the terms you got to know what the term really means. Then you can deal with it. But if you let somebody just take the term and give you their definition of it, mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Yeah. They, they'll, they'll lead you down the wrong road. Mm -hmm. They will lead you to hell because they have taken a term that's a trigger point, press your button, and made you believe the wrong thing. So you got to know God for yourself. Yeah. And the way that you get to one know God for yourself is when one is justified. When one is justified through belief in Jesus Christ, God considers that person righteous. There is a stark difference between works-based works -based salvation and justification by grace. In a works-based salvation, one strives as hard as one can and hopes at the end that I've done enough to earn salvation. Works bad. Right. But this suggests that salvation can be earned like a wage and can only be withheld if the work was not up to par. In contrast, though, justification by God's grace is given freely through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Now, the metaphor of being slaves to sin, that's the term that's used, I'm a slave to sin, or I'm a slave to righteousness. Now, look, look at this. Now, we got to understand that this slavery concept, the Hebrew slavery concept, was one of a of, 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 of personal uh, debt, or uh, one where one had to be somebody may have had to take care of you, and that in exchange for you being taken care of, then you would become obligated to that person. This is under the Hebrews. Listen to me now. Mm -hmm. So when they call somebody a slave, that person could obtain their freedom after a period of time under the Hebrew slavery system. The North American, the 
the, the European slavery system was generational. Generational slavery means that my kids, me, my two oh, I they are enslaved forever. Right. That's the problem. That's the difference. So, but don't let somebody tell you that the slavery that we're talking about in the Hebrew Bible is the same as what we were subjected to in North America. And so the America, if you will. Don't, 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 don't let people, don't, don't go for that. Because it's not true. And, and Lord have mercy. And, and, and somebody said we were talking on Thursday. You know, you, you can't say that those people aren't Christian that enslave people. They may call themselves Christian, right. but they're not Christian. Right. They can't call themselves Christian. That's what I'm trying to say. Just because you call yourself that, are you really that? Right. And who only knows is between you and God. We can't judge one another in terms of our faith. All we got to do is try to keep pointing to Jesus and hope that there's somebody to have true faith in him. Let's go to Scripture 25 so we get out of here. Uh, 25. Uh, Romans 3, 25. Christ's sacrifice. It says God, okay, before I read the Scripture, our thoughts are not God's thoughts, right? Right, right? So then he came up with the perfect sacrifice right. that made the temple obsolete. Mm -hmm. So because there's no need for any more sacrifice. Right. Once Christ sacrificed, that's it. Mm -hmm. No need for no more sacrifice. Right. So don't let people come, that's what I'm saying, don't let people talk about generational slavery versus chattel or, or promissory type slavery. Mm -hmm. Don't let people confuse you with that and make you think that it's all one thing and you lose the best thing that could ever happen in your life because you don't understand what somebody's saying. There's too much. There's, there's, there's too bad. Your life is too important. Let me go to Scripture 25. It said, God presented, it said, God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood. Come on, baby. To be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his right. His righteousness, because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. That means God was not going to bend his rules for us, see? So, that you know, because the sacrificial system was a temporary system, and it was made obsolete by Jesus' sacrificial death, and that's over in Hebrews 9. Uh, verses 11 through 14, but I'm not going to go there right now. It said, when we respond by faith, Jesus' blood accomplishes the atonement we require for the remission of sin. Yeah. But you got to really believe. Mm -hmm. You got to really, so because then, listen to this. It said, forbearance. God, when God talked about forbearance, in, in, because in his forbearance, God in the scripture, in his forbearance, forbearance points to God's patience. Now, listen to this. It takes into account the cycle of sacrifices necessary before Jesus' death. God's forbearance was seen in his allowance for animal sacrifices before he, he passed judgment. So he was forbearing or not placing judgment on humanity, and he allowed the substitution for animal sacrifices. But now, keep, keep in mind what we're talking about, it all always points to Jesus. So now that we've had Jesus' sacrifice of, of women, the animal sacrifices were just a past shadow of things to come, amen, brother, which was Jesus Christ. So animal sacrifice was just a, 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 just a blimp, foreshadow. foreshadow of what, when, when Jesus came, 
and didn't commit any sin and then accepted the sins of the world on his shoulders so that we can have a way to salvation is, is the message. And you, can't, and you can't deviate from the message because people have a hard time accepting the message. You can't worry about that. You got to just tell the message like it is. And listen, you tell the message through your testimony. See, you got to have a testimony. You got to know Jesus for yourself. And so, because God is not going to continue to forbear. And when, when he stopped forbearing, is when we see Jesus coming back. Because when Jesus comes back, he's coming back in judgment. Right now, he's in grace. Grace. <laughs> a whole lot of grace, brother. <laughs> God said a lot of grace. It, it, it's here, but listen to this. It's true. But listen to this. This is gonna be the sad part is when he gets when he when he, when he, when he said that's it. It's a wrap. <laughs> woo, 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 woo. There's gonna be a lot of crying and gashing. Man, I don't wanna be a part of that. Can you imagine? Woo, woo. Come on, let me go and finish this up, man. Thank y'all so good. Y'all such a good class. 26. He said he did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time, so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Now, it was a remarkable tension is created when God and his perfect character, a tension, y'all, between God and man, God says, keep me first in all that you do and say. You see what I'm saying? But then man doesn't want to do that, so then that creates a tension between God. You see? Right. Because God is not going to bend his holiness right. for, yeah, for unholy man. Yeah, he's not going to do that. But he gave, so that's, that's, that's the beauty of what we're talking about. But he gave us a way where we can achieve it right. without being holy. Right. right. You ain't going to be holy. You, you, can, you can strive for it, right. but you ain't going to be it. Right. But you, that's, what, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> uh, uh, striving for being perfected. And we kept because we want to be more like Christ, right. but unfortunately, y'all, we can't do it. But then, but we this. Oh, thank you, brother Black. You know what we can do, though. You know what we can do is believe it in your heart. That's the key. But you can't. I mean, but listen, man. We can all listen. I'm gonna. We can all fall short. But you but you can, you don't have to fall short with believing Jesus Christ as God in your heart. And then once you I mean what but she you still gonna sin. But you're gonna sin a little less hope. You see what I'm saying? You still gonna be you. That's what the the lesson is saying in this right here. Okay, then I'm, I'm, we're gonna be finished. It says this. It says the tension. So in, in the next scripture, 27, Romans 3, 27. Where then is boasting? Oh, I know y'all going to be late, so I just came to the ball. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, All right, come on around, brother. Now, that's, 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 that's <laughs> Boy, you're going to make me shout. No, okay with oh, me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. See, that's what, all we got to do is just keep track. I'm going to keep working. I'm going to keep working until I can't work no more because I can't, I know I can't make up all the time I've lost not knowing what I was missing. But now I know it. Woo, man. So because I know it in my heart. You see what I'm saying? I know I got my fault. And you got your, and that's what this last scripture is going to be talking about. It said, in the book about boasting. Where at the end is boasting? It is excluded because of what law? 
The law that requires works? No, because of the law that requires faith. Yeah. What's faith? True belief that Jesus Christ is, I'm trying to tell you simply as I can tell you, there's nobody greater than him. That means, but you've got to believe. You you listen, you got you got you got man, I'm telling you, if you just keep that in your mind and don't let it when then when you see it slipping, know it's slipping and call it back. That's what I'm saying, that's what happened. I had to call it back. You know, because I, I slipped, man. I'm like, man, I know I'm in pain, I there's stuff I can overcome, I'm getting old, but I can't let that mess up what I know. Can't do that. And that's what this is saying. So then the boasting, because it said this verse was really for the Jewish 27, verse 27 was really for the Jewish Christians who heard it. Because they took great pride. See, the Jews took great pride. You would too. If Jesus Christ was part of your heritage, <laughs> when you met that Come on now. There ain't nothing wrong with it either. Let them definitely see he opened it up for all. That a Jew is no better than a Gentile, a Gentile is no better than a Jew. Now, what we talked about the other day is that we really need to have what they call a universal church. Because by us always separating ourselves, we have we have not embraced the true value of Christianity. That's that's true. So, and that's what the scripture is talking about. That there is no difference between us, even though there may be physical differences. Right. And God left it like that because He wanted it like that. He wants us to be different in our own way. But He also wants us to be unified in our way in terms of acknowledging Him through Jesus Christ. See, that's, that's the part that that throws people off right there. And that's what we have to show them through our actions and through, you know, not just what we say, but what we do. And people, because people study people. Mm -hmm. See, and eventually they see what you're doing. You know, you may not be, you may be doing this and doing that, but we also see this over here. You know, and so because here you go, 28. But we maintain that a person, for we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Justified by faith. And see, that's the part, but it's true, though. Let me ask you this. Why is it true? Because he made it available to all. So then if he made it available to all, then he's got to do something that all can do. Right. And listen to this. This what something all should be able to do is tell the truth. <laughs> so if you tell the truth, then, when you said, for me and my house, it shall worship the Lord. That means that's what's happening right. in here. Amen. That's the house. That's the house. <laughs> and for me and this house. Yeah. Yeah, and because... I really, so, because that's what the scripture is it, just saying it right there. It says, for we maintain that a person is justified by faith. See how simple that? But see, that goes with somebody's head. Because then they still think it's something else. It's another key. But you just got the key right there. But you don't want to accept the key because you lean it unto your own understanding. There is a disease called the disease of osmosis where people think that just because they think something 
is true. That's that's the disease, y'all. Plants can do that. Plants can get benefit from each other like that. But human beings, we can't do it. We are we are creatures of habit. That's why some of us have accents when we come from certain. That's why some of us speak different languages, but we say the same word. They just sound different. But it's because we are taught like that. So that's why it's so important for us to teach our children who Jesus Christ is. We got to. And I'm going to finish up right here because I want to show y'all this right here. Uh, 29. It says, or is it, or is God? This is a question. 29. We're still talking about the same thing. Or is God the God of Jews only? Is he not the God of Gentiles too? Yes, of Gentiles too. Now that's a rhetorical question that Paul asks people because you know the answer. You know he's the God of both the Gentiles and the Jews. But Paul had to make sure that the people understood that there's, you go to Scripture 30. It goes right in 30. It says, since there is only one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through the same faith. That, now, that Scripture is saying the same thing, the uncircumcised Gentile, right. circumcised Jew. He, it doesn't matter because it all comes down to faith. Right. Faith in what? <laughs> That's it. But you got to believe. But see, you <laughs> That's what, and you can't bet. See, this is what got me. I'm just telling you because I was hurting so badly, I, I, I just couldn't. I was thinking about God. And a lot of people get, it may not be, it, 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 it may be something that's there where you don't see it. But once you see it, then you know you got to put God first, Jesus over whatever it is keeping you from it, from him. But you got to figure out what is it? That's sin. Because you can't figure it out. You can't figure it out, man. That's why we got to believe in Jesus. Yeah, and keep him first because he's the only one that can really deal with this. Man, we can't, we're not equipped to listen, everything. That's why I'm gonna tell you this. That's why man law. You got first degree murder, you got second degree murder, you got a manslaughter. Why? Why? Because man cannot deal with treating everything the same. But God does. That's why he had to have Jesus. Because God can do it like that, y'all. It's either on, that's the computer way you know it, it's not. It's either on or it's off. It's nothing in between. Either you believe in Jesus or you don't. No, either you believe that he's God or you don't. And it, it, there's nothing in between. That's what I'm trying to set up and tell you. Not, I'm trying to tell you I am professing my belief in Jesus Christ with my life. That's what I'm talking about. There's nothing in between. Nothing. I'm trying to tell you. And if you ain't got it like that, you need to get it. Yes, sir. You get stuck in between it, boy. You can be there a long time. Yes, sir. <laughs> Brother, I can't get no women. No, 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 and I'm stuck in between. Yes, sir. And God, man, I tell you, that's why I, that's why I give my testimony all I can because I saw 
where he converted me. Because I was stuck in yeah. I was stuck, man. It's all the world. I told you about that yesterday. Because I was stuck. I'm like, man, I thought I was a bad boy. And he showed me what bad is there. <laughs> Woo, thank you, Jesus. That's it, y'all. Yeah. I'm through. Let me see what that is. Because, yeah, we, so we talked about, okay, because see, that's why man, his consciousness, he has to have some type of, 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 of degree. See, he's got, I'm telling you, just look at you, can go through all kinds of stuff and see it. You know, <laughs> How much money did you steal? <laughs> did you steal a hundred dollars? Or did you steal twenty thousand oh. dollars? Did you steal a hundred dollars? You stole twenty thousand dollars? And now you go because because in our mind is more. You took more. So you deserve more punishment. It's still the same. That's the, and that's the belief in Christ. See? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you got a hundred dollar belief. It doesn't matter if you got a twenty thousand dollars. You just gotta have a belief. Have that belief. Have that belief. I mean, bro. Why does it have it, man? That right. Yes. Well, it's a hundred dollars. Woo! Oh, thank you. Listen here. Thank you. I don't know. Well, you know, yeah, we got a church. Yeah, we can have a church over here. We got a church. Hey, y'all, let, 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 me, let me ask you, Brother Monroe, to close this out. All right. Since he came over sure, today, bro. man, that shows a lot of faith. Praise the Lord. They want to put money on. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Lord. for protection on and off the highways. And thank you for watching over us last night, allowing us to see a day we've never seen before. Thank you for waking us in our right mind, Lord. Yeah. And thank you for your word this morning, Lord. Strengthen us through your word. Give yeah. understanding through your word, Lord. May the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be accepted in our sight, Lord. Bless you, bless them in more in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you. 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 Thank you.